Good morning everybody, this is Nikki G from Better Commander, and today we're looking at one of the most emo legends ever printed, Belby, Corrupted Observer. Belby was originally an elven princess, Avila, daughter of the elf lord Eladamri. Belby has a huge part in the overall magic storyline and was a Phyrexian cyborg created by Yawgmoth solely to choose the next Evancar of Wrath, or leader of the bad guys in that storyline. The corpse of a villa was implanted with Phyrexian enhancements and had dark oil blood in her veins and was given a Phyrexian body cam so Yawgmoth could keep an eye on things. Eventually she was forced to declare Krovax as the next Evancar and then she was murdered by her elven father. Urtai, a Phyrexian corrupted wizard, had a secret relationship with Belby and pulled her skull out of the funeral pyre as a memento mori, which is not something I'd advocate for, but uh, whatever. This art is very beautiful. It captures the Phyrexian elegance and horror, and she exudes an aura of superiority. All right, let's read the card. Belby, Corrupted Observer, is a black and a green mana for a legendary creature, a Phyrexian zombie elf, 2-2. At the beginning of each player's post-combat main phase, that player adds colorless, colorless for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. Damage causes loss of life. So first things first, this applies to everybody. So it's like a twisted group hug mechanic. So if my opponent damages uh, my two other opponents and cracks a fetch land, damaging themselves, they get six colorless mana in their post-combat main phase. Secondly, this commander has mana value two. This presents a perplexing problem for our opponents. If they remove Belby immediately, which they probably should, then they just wasted their removal on a two mana cost creature who I can recast again from the command zone, especially if we landed out any of our ramp. So mechanically, we want our opponents losing life quickly. Uh, then we want colorless six mana value spells to piggyback, hopefully on turn two, and then we want our finishers. This deck is deceptively simple, but surprisingly nuanced. The ideal play pattern is putting out a one mana life loss dork, then turn two, Belby, and second main phase, something huge for six colorless mana. So we have these one mana attack weirdos, which is what I call them. We have Night Market Lookout, Mardu Shadow Spear, Pulse Tracker, Thornbow Archer, Vicious Conquistador. These all have the same things in common. They're one mana, and when they attack, or when they tap, uh, each opponent loses one life. So we want every effect like this that we can get, so we can get Belby out turn two, and then have six colorless mana in our second main phase. Unfortunately, there aren't enough of these effects at one mana, so we have to go up a little bit. Um, slightly higher mana value, we have Sanctum of Stone Fangs, Shepherd of Rot, Spawn of Mayhem, Loyal Subordinate, Cryptolith Fragment, and Hooded Blight Fang. I wanted to highlight Spawn of Mayhem real quick. So this is two black black for a creature, Demon 4-4. Spectacle for one black black. So you can cast this spell for its spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent lost life this turn, which is the whole point of this deck. So it has flying and trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each player. Then if you have 10 or less life, put a plus one plus one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. So this is a really good card in this deck. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer that contributes to our life loss theme and comes out for its spectacle cost uh, for three mana. So as the game goes on, we want to keep casting cards and we want our opponents to keep losing life. So we have Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which can get us some late game life gain. We have Massacre Worm, uh, Crypt Gas for the Extort. We also have Wound Reflection just to generally throw a monkey wrench into everyone's day. I love this art on Massacre Worm from Core 2021. This looks like the Star Wars guy that ate Jar Jar Binks or whatever. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to Star Wars, but I like how menacing and awesome he looks. Massacre Worm is three black 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 for a creature, a Phyrexian Worm. It's a 6-5. When Massacre Worm enters the battlefield, the creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. This is an awesome card in this deck and can sweep out our tokens and our smaller utility creatures that our opponents have already put on the battlefield. So before we get to our giant threats, I wanted to mention some card draw that keeps the gas going. There are about eight zombies in this deck, including our commander, so we included Greyborn Muse. So this is two black black for a creature, Zombie Spirit, it's a 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of zombies you control. Honestly, we don't want too many zombies because this deck tends to pay lots of life and we don't want to accidentally lose the game. With Belby out and maybe one other zombie, we're drawing three extra cards, losing three life, which is honestly perfect. One of my favorite cards out of Modern Horizons is Dothy Voidwalker, and I'm trialing one in this deck. This can be an excellent Gravehade piece and can shore up the weaknesses inherent in a 
uh, green and black deck. Incidental big ramp cards or big draw or a good removal spell can make a huge difference for us. So Dothy Voidwalker is black mana, black mana for a creature, Dothy Rogue. It's a 3-2. That's Shadow. If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead with a void counter on it. So you can tap and sacrifice Dothy Voidwalker, choose an exile card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. I also have a copy of Greater Good in this deck as we are playing huge colorless creatures that we can sacrifice in response to targeted removal. Um, this is one of those cards that I would say buy right now because I think it's only about $2. It just got reprinted in one of the Commander Supplemental products. So now we get into our big colorless cards, and these are going to be pretty varied. So we have a couple categories, the first one being Ramp in the form of cards like Burnished Heart, Skyclave Relic, Coveted Jewel, Dreamstone Hedron. Coveted Jewel is always kind of a risky biscuit. So basically we play one of these out on turn two, and then turn three we can cast a Torment of Hailfire where X is equal to 10. So that's just devastating for our opponents. I've had it happen in several games uh, that I went on not to win. So we also have a bunch of uh, utility cards like Oblivion Sower, Conduit of Ruin, Wandering Archaic, Staff of Nin. Wandering Archaic is a really cool card and makes uh, life very difficult for our opponents. Let's take a look at this little hate piece, God Pharaoh Statue. Six colorless mana for a legendary artifact. Spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. So this guy feeds into our life loss theme and taxes everything our opponents do. We also want to be winning the game at some point, so we have to run some relatively big threats. And we have quite a few in this deck. Uh, this deck actually reminds me of the old days of Commander when like nobody would do anything for three turns and all of a sudden we're playing big eight cost spells. But um, I do have a couple from back in those days, uh, including Steel Hellkite. So this is a Commander staple. Uh, it's the bane of token decks. Um, you slap on some boots or some greaves and ruin some token player's day. Worm Coil Engine, I mean, it's just a tasty, awesome card. All right, we want to put in some big beaters like Colossus of Ac Acros, Phyrexian Triniform, Ancient Stone Idol, and Kozilek, the Great Distortion. Colossus of Acros is awesome in this deck. It's 8 generic mana for a 10-10, has Defender and Indestructible. So for 10 generic mana, you can give it 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters and uh, have it be able to attack. This card is awesome in this deck, and it's just a fun card to play. Kozilek the Great Distortion is about $20 right now. So it's um, 8 generic mana and colorless and colorless, so you have to pay colorless mana for those two. So it's a legendary creature, Eldrazi, 12-12. When you cast this spell, if you have fewer than 7 cards in your hand, draw cards equal to the difference. That's a pretty great effect right there. So it has Menace, and discard a card with mana value X, counter target spell with mana value X. So we want to keep our hands full and um, frustrate our opponents. This guy is just an absolute unit. All right, we also have a couple Mind Slaver effects. I know, I know. Uh, Mind Slaver and Worst Fears. These can be crappy cards to play against and may make your play group incredibly salty. But this is the only deck I have them in. Um, I've talked to my play group about it. I mean, they obviously don't like these cards, but um, also they agree that they're fair. I mean, it costs 10 mana to do for Mind Slaver and 8 for Worse Fears. Um, so these cards can end stalled game states or make the untouchable player at the table vulnerable again, or they can just put the nail in the coffin for a troublesome opponent or the last opponent at the table. So really, I mean, discuss with your play group if you include these types of cards. I have no problem with them. Um, my group hates them, but they agree they're fair. I do have a couple X spell finishers. We have the aforementioned Torment of Hailfire, which is another card that'll generate a lot of salt in your play group. We also have Genesis Wave, which can get us an incredible blast of permanence. There are 83 in this deck, and if we can pump 10 to 12 mana into Genesis Wave's X cost, we can set up an incredibly uh, resilient board state. I also included a bunch of good removal. Uh, I have this beautiful version of Assassin's Trophy. I had a copy of Deadly Rollick that it wasn't in another deck. Um, black and green have good options for removal. Gerard's Orders. This is one of those cards that I'm surprised is only 83 cents or so. I put in a copy here because I have Phyrexian Delver. So if I um, tutor up Phyrexian Delver and one of our huge creatures, I can immediately play Phyrexian Delver and then have a huge creature on the battlefield. Um, this is a great card in this deck. I also put in some burst draw cards like Siphon Mind. Um, these cards generally... Um, utilize some of our colorless mana to draw into our threats. Some of them have uh, life costs associated with them. That's why I worry about sometimes 
um, ending my game early. So as always, I'll put the deck list in the description. You can peruse my list. I battle tested this deck and it hangs really well with the non-CEDH, but still pretty high power meta that I tend to live in. So no matter what happens in this game, a Belby deck has a huge impact on the course of things. I also, I also think this is an incredibly cool and stylish commander that you should try brewing up. So leave a like, subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. And this is going to be Nikki G from Better Commander signing off.